right, here we are, and these are the questions people have sent in. Leslie, what inspired you to write your new book, Becoming Grandma? Let me take a wild guess. You became a grandma. <laughs> These, our audience. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! You can't keep well, up with it. I will tell you how it happened because they, the publisher, first asked me to write a, an inside story of sixty minutes, and I oh. knew that if I did that, oh, no. and told the truth, I'd be out yeah, on my we ear. Don't hear. So then, this was the second right. idea. Oh, Went I with see. the second idea. But really, what's going on with Steve Craw? <laughs> <laughs> He was getting some, wasn't he? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because okay. I'm going to talk to you about being a grandmother. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, but the, the book, can I talk about the book for one second? Of course. All right, it's not just about being a grandmother. It's about... I'm misleading. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just about the pleasure of being a grandmother. It's about the science, the biochemistry. It's about the history. It's about the of tension. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's about the tension with your daughter-in-law. The history of grandmothers. <laughs> you, grandmother, you have a grand, child. <laughs> grandmotherism was invented in uh, the late 17th century. <laughs> Before that, non-existent. Yeah, I was going to say. Grandmothers, the grandmothers, human grandmothers are one of the few. Well, let me sorry. <laughs> humans are one of the few animals on the planet that have grandmothers who nurture and take care of babies. Animals die when they are no longer able to reproduce, generally speaking. Right. So humans that we live and live in long enough to take care of our children's children is the very reason that humans even exist. It's called the grandmother theory. When I was a child, I even had a great grandmother. Oh, really? Yeah. That's unusual for our really? age. Really? For our age. But today, it's when not so unusual. When I was a so child, unusual. though. When you were a child. Yeah, I was a child. <laughs> not my great grandmother. She was old. <laughs> <laughs> but people she got married really younger old. and younger, so that yeah. right, there were a lot. But grandmothers, going back to the caveman times, took right. care of the babies, and we've gotten away from that. And I'm writing a, a book you can to be say a grandmother we... at 40. I remember oh, uh, yeah. in the movie uh, the Virgin. What was the the 40-year-old virgin? What? Well, 40-year-old virgin. There was like a hot grandmother in there. Have a child at 16, and the next child has a child. Sure. At, uh, right. Children having children, as Newt Gingrich used to say. Uh, Van Jones, do you see hope for bipartisanship in the efforts to reform our criminal justice system? You know, actually, I do. And, you know, you just... Fuck that. What's your grandmother like? <laughs> <laughs> she provides a lot of care and nurturing for the grandchildren. Very it's important amazing in, in the black thing. community. Exactly. Right? The grandmothers, I think yes. the grand grand and great grandmothers. However... Right, and uh, great grandmothers. However, technically, they're called... Big mamas. We don't call. We don't have. That's, Is that that's, right? That's, 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 that's very true. not just in the movie. That's not just in the movies. That's, right. I, I, had, I had a big mama I, and a big daddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. still, they were they were also played by Martin Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> So that is the thing. Okay. Yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but I, I do. I, you mentioned Newt uh, Gingrich. Uh, Newt and I actually had a TV show together called Crossfire for about half an hour, and then um, afterwards it turned well, out it was a reboot. Of course, it was a reboot. Right. But it actually turned out the only thing we agreed on was the idea that the criminal justice system has become, from the point of view of conservatives, a big failed government bureaucracy right. that grows and grows and gobbles up more money the worse job it gets. And so we can actually work together on one thing, cutting that stuff out. That's the only thing you agreed on? And on everything else we just Handicapped on the moon? Uh, we, listen, whatever it, what it, No, you, come no. on. Hmm? What? Newt wants the handicapped on the moon. Am I, anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not making this Yeah, up. we build a nice little moon base for them. <laughs> Bunch of pillows. They love it. You, <laughs> you're going back into your mafia yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. It's a mafia character, apparently. No, he says because there's no gravity. And so it wouldn't... Oh. It's, it's I haven't, I haven't, Newt Gingrich. He's, no, uh, no he's, he's got great ideas. I haven't, I haven't read all of his ideas. He's got great ideas. Okay. Obama is in Britain today, your home country. Does the UK-US special relationship still exist? Yes, I would. It always will. How could it not? Then the mother country. Yeah, there's a lot of. What about the grandmother country? He's <laughs> <laughs> uh, very popular. He's very popular. I was reading this morning. Obama. Uh, yeah, yeah. As he should be. Seventy-nine percent or something. But but he has annoyed some people, and I think quite quite fairly they're annoyed by wading into the debate over the European Union. Um, Firstly, yes, he I, commented, didn't he? Well, he, did, he went Stay a bit in. further than commenting, I think. And uh, firstly, it's odd, given American independence, to get too involved 
in whether a country should stay with a larger political union. It does um, affect us, though. No, it does, it does. Absolutely. Um, but I also think that he, uh, he, he sort of threatened the country today. He said, well, we, we, we won't be too interested in a trade deal with you guys if, uh, if you leave the EU. And come on, I mean, Britain and America, the trade between the two countries is extraordinary at any given point. So I don't think he quite what, meant and that. And what is, what is your feeling about the European Union? Stay in? Uh, no, I would leave. I would really? leave. If, for me, it's a matter of, of sovereignty more than anything else. But don't they have the best of both worlds? Because they're not on the currency. I mean, they are quasi-independent from it. Well, it seems the, like they, to, to me, as opposed to most countries who have to throw their whole lot in. To me, to me, it's just a question of basic sovereignty. If you elect people, they shouldn't give away the power you've loaned them. And that's what's happened with Europe. Yeah. You know, the parliament was elected by the people, and then the parliament gave it to people who aren't elected, and they can make laws within England. I don't think America would accept that with another country. I don't well, know why This Britain debate does. is going to be settled by ISIS, by the way. Well, I think... Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I actually I mean, don't mean a think couple Britain, more attacks, and they're not going to win. Maybe. I don't think Britain will leave. I think they'll stay. Do you think Obama's become a completely different person? No. He was so careful for eight, seven, eight years, and all of a sudden... He's saying things about Saudi Arabia. Senioritis. Yeah. Is it senioritis? It's like in high school, your last six months, senioritis. Just throw it up Absolutely. and he doesn't say anything. Yeah, what's he got to lose? He, he, is, he is so outspoken. We call it, we call it swagger. Yeah, that's oh, right. Swagger. Is that what yeah. it is? <laughs> that's right. Okay. Uh, how should the government combat the epidemic of prescription drug abuse? Well, that's relevant because we heard the sad news about our friend Prince that apparently he was... Yeah, we all love print. Um, but that's the news today, that apparently he, you know, probably... And th by the way, this is, this is a common story in show business. I could think of a lot of people, Jerry Lewis, Chevy Chase, comedians who did pratfalls hurt themselves, musicians who hurt themselves, and that's when you have to start taking... Hmm. Uh, they give you OxyContin, they give you OxyCodeine, wow. these, these basic... It's basically heroin. I mean, poor people wind up doing heroin because they can't afford the prescription drugs anymore. But well, apparently... <clears throat> well, that, that has not, it's not been confirmed, and obviously I'm, I'm somebody quite close to him and quite close to the family, and I'm wearing my, my, my rest in purple. So, um, you know... Um, uh, but, so, but taking him out of it, because that has not been confirmed, what I will say is that I'm glad that we're finally able to have a conversation. Uh, when... Uh, I watched the Republican Party uh, hugging heroin-addicted folks, opioid-addicted folks. It makes me very happy, but it also makes me very mad because those same Republicans and Democrats, when the problem was crack, showed no mercy, no compassion, no understanding at all, and locked up a whole bunch of people. So I, I, do, I do think that now that it's hitting everybody, uh, hopefully we can come up with a more compassionate response. Okay. Thomas Middleditch, do you find that to make it in comedy these days, you must be active on social media? <laughs> I think if you'll look at my Twitter feed, uh, you'll find that I don't. <laughs> 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 well, I'm like, know, a, I'm like a one, one tweet about like what my poo looks like a week and then I'm out. <laughs> ah, interesting. Get a squatty potty. Peace. Later. <laughs> So you, don't, you don't do a lot of tweeting? I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, here and there, but... Yeah, uh, no, I, I should be better at it, too. But, I, but I, when I do it, I enjoy it. It's fine. Uh, I, didn't, I fought it at the beginning, but it, it is... What? It's like, it's like epigrams, you know, like in the old days, you know, the old Victorian writers or but, some old writers, Francis Bacon, now whatever you, that era was. There was, a, there was a, 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 an art to being very concise. You know, a stitch or, and nine or, saves time, those kind of things. Or being a moron like that orange guy running for president. And part of the problem that we have... <laughs> Don't that, bring color into this thing. <laughs> Come on. Like, but, but part of the problem we have is that the reason I think that Trump has been so successful is because this is a new media moment. You know, FDR... That's so true. Right, FDR You're understood right. radio, he dominated. Right. JFK understood television, yep. dominated. So true. Uh, Obama Great understood point. the Internet, dominated. This guy understands social media and reality television, right. and he's dominating. And everybody else is playing by the old rules. You're right. So that's, you know, and, and I thought, and I think we thought he was going to leave the entertainment world and come over the wall into politics. He's pulled politics over into the world of entertainment. We're now living in his reality TV show, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. That's good. Lawrence Wright, your play Camp David is about the 1978 negotiations between Egypt and Israel. I remember that. You remember that. I remember that. You kids don't. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see any reason 
<laughs> Do you see any reason to hope for further progress for peace? Wow, that's a tough one. That's a smart There's one. always, I mean, if you look at Camp David, Carter, Big, and Sadat, you had a failing president. Uh, and at the was, time, uh, Carter was failing. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. stagflation, stagflation. Uh, all the the gas lines, uh, farmers when their Disco. tractors and yeah, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. So he was, he was he was yeah. he started out with very high poll numbers and they right. just it was ski slope down, and then uh, Anwar Sadat we think of him as being such a noble. He was an assassin. He'd been in prison twice. Uh, he managed to kill one of the government ministers. He was a Nazi sympathizer. Uh, Menachem Begin was a terrorist. One of the great blow up the King most, David. Yeah, Hunter, one of the yeah. most. So you had an assassin, a, a terrorist, and a failing president, and they made peace. Right. So don't tell me that you need the right people. You just need people with political courage. Now Jimmy Carter gets shit on so much. What a ballsy guy, and the only president who didn't fire a shot That's ever right. in office. Yeah, and he, he brought the hostages home, yeah. and they all lived. They all survived. That's right. Sounds like a pussy. The Iranian hostage? Yeah, Jimmy Carter. Well, well they, they landed the, the second day. Reagan yeah. became. Well, they right. waited to, because right. deliberately, the but right. he didn't keep by just right. being calm and not well, he, taking any. Well, except he, tried. That, he, he tried. He tried, he right tried to fire a shot. He just missed. But anyway, I, mean, <laughs> right. I, I, I love Jimmy Carter. I'm like, right. Yeah. The helicopter crashed. Yeah. Yes, it did. And you know, when when Obama went to get Bin Laden, he said. Huh, let's send an extra helicopter. Yeah, yeah. that was a good idea. Pretty badass. Yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. <laughs>